Climate change is the most pressing challenge we face today. Carbon emissions from industry, transport and other forms of energy continue to threaten our future. In the UK, the Climate Change Act commits us to reducing carbon emissions to 80% of their 1990 levels by the year 2050. And to do so requires a major rethink of the way we provide many of our essential services, including how we generate energy for power and heat. If you go back to the challenge of the Climate Change Act, it's an 80% reduction in emissions. Um, heat in the UK accounts for over 30% of those emissions and about 80% of people, 90% in cities, use gas, currently natural gas, which is methane, for heating. The UK uses around about 600 terawatt hours of gas each year. Uh, a very large proportion of our energy comes from it. In fact, on a winter's day, 90% of our energy, uh, both for heat, light and power, comes through the gas network. The challenge of decarbonising UK energy demand is immense. The UK gas grid currently provides the majority of energy for heat and a significant amount of energy to generate electricity. It also manages huge interseasonal swings in demand between winter and summer. Current decarbonisation of electricity with renewables provides a tiny proportion of total electrical demand requirements. Decarbonising the gas grid is a different scale of challenge altogether. It's a huge logistical challenge and to date there's never been really a, a holistic solution presented with minimal impact on the consumer, minimal impact on the production of the energy and minimal impact more importantly on the transportation system. The energy industry has traditionally been based on carbon. Carbon dioxide is the biggest contributor to greenhouse gases. So that requires that the energy industry transforms over that period, which is a major technical and business challenge. Another key benefit of using gas for heat is its ability to store energy indefinitely and in huge volumes to manage peaks and troughs in demand. What gas does is it has the ability to store energy for an indefinite amount of time. So what we can do in the gas industry is manage these huge interseasonal swings between winter and summer by storing the gas in summer when there's a surplus because demand's low because no one's got the heating on and then using that stored gas in winter. You simply can't do that with an electrical system with the technology we've got today. When considering decarbonisation, it's important that we consider the entire system. The UK gas system comprises energy production in the form of natural gas from both its own North Sea and wider global reserves. This gas is then transported to consumers through a network of high-pressure pipelines that subsequently feed into a much larger network of distribution pipes running throughout our towns and cities. In our towns and cities, up to 90% of all consumers use this gas for heat. Replacing the entire gas system, production, transportation and consumption with an alternative energy source which can provide the flexible, secure energy the network provides today is recognised as incredibly challenging. However, if we can utilise the existing gas network with a decarbonised fuel, the scale and complexity of the challenge is greatly reduced. The H21 Leeds Citygate project addresses this specific question by establishing if it is possible to convert the distribution system in a large city from natural gas to hydrogen. The current gas we use is methane, which when you burn it, you combine it with oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide, water and heat. Conversely, hydrogen, when you burn it, you combine it with oxygen and it only produces water and heat. It physically can't produce any carbon dioxide because there's no carbon element to it. It means it have all the advantages uh, of the gas supply network uh, without having the carbon output. The gas industry for the last 200 years has been putting in assets under the cities which are extensive assets. Now that distribution system is being upgraded with polyethylene and is perfect to transition between methane to hydrogen. The UK has been undertaking a major pipe replacement programme in the low and medium pressure distribution systems, replacing old iron pipes with polyethylene, a material suitable for transporting hydrogen. Significant amounts of many UK cities have already been upgraded and the programme is due for completion by 2032. With hydrogen recognised as a low carbon alternative to natural gas, 
The H21 Leeds City Gate project was created to determine whether the existing gas grid of a large UK city could be converted to hydrogen using technology already available today. H21 asked a series of key questions to establish the feasibility and method for converting leads. What was the energy demand of the city? Could supply be achieved to match this demand? Could the network be converted to carry hydrogen? And how much would all this cost? Leeds was chosen as the perfect city for the project because of its size and its location. We chose Leeds because it's one of the biggest cities in the UK. It's got a complex gas grid. It's got a very high demand, which makes it efficient to start looking at the initial conversion. So you've got one and a quarter percent of the UK population being served by this one project. That means you've got good stepping stones to do the same for any other city. The first challenge for the project team was to establish the actual demand for the Leeds area. The city generates an annual energy demand for heat of six terawatt hours. Having established demand, the team needed to identify how to supply this volume of hydrogen. The most viable solution, noting the amount of energy we need in the gas sector for heat, is to use what's called steam methane reforming. A steam methane reformer is a process of generating high purity hydrogen on an economical large scale. We take the natural gas and then we react that natural gas with steam over a nickel catalyst to generate a crude hydrogen gas. Almost all the hydrogen made in the world today comes from steam methane reformers, tens of millions of tonnes a year. So the easy thing to do is to do more of the same. Steam methane reformers or SMRs are an established method of producing hydrogen at scale, already in operation in the UK like this plant at Teesside. In the United States, SMRs are already being used alongside established carbon capture technology to capture the separated carbon, which can be used for enhanced oil recovery or stored safely. The H21 project team established that in order to meet the annual energy demand for leads of 6 terawatt hours, a secure continuous hydrogen supply of 1,025 megawatts will be required. This will be generated by four SMRs which will be located at Teesside due to the already large chemical production infrastructure and potential for carbon capture and storage. Here in the Tees Valley, we're well used to developing um, large-scale industrial projects uh, and processes. We're probably the home to one of the largest concentration of engineers here in the UK, all of whom had experience in making the, uh, the hydrogen. We've got a population who are used to this kind of development, who see the benefits that it's brought to the region over the, over the decades, and we think this is the right place to do it. In order to manage the high demand in winter and low demand in summer, the hydrogen production facilities need to be supported by a combination of daily storage at Teesside and interseasonal storage in the Humber area. This will be provided in the form of salt caverns. Salt cavern is a mined void in a geological formation of salt or halite. It's like a big laboratory flask. It's very big and it's a long way down. Salt caverns act as reservoirs, providing a store of gas that allows the network to cope with intraday and interseasonal swings in demand. You need stores alongside so that the steam methane reformers can operate at their optimum, which is continuously. And when the gas demand in the city doesn't need the hydrogen, it can be diverted to the stores to refill them. It's the same methodology as we use for gas storage in the UK already. The north of England is a great place for salt caverns and hydrogen production. The gas is available, the salt's available, a good place to start doing this. To transport the hydrogen from the site of production and storage to Leeds, a hydrogen transmission pipeline will be built connecting the city's gas grid to Teesside and Hull. A hydrogen transmission pipeline is the same as a natural gas transmission pipeline. The pressures will be a bit lower, but they look the same, i.e. you can't see them at all. To determine if the existing gas network was the right size, Northern Gas Networks, the gas utility for Leeds, used their network design software, adapted to show the results when running hydrogen through the system. We ran the model and analysed, is the network the right capacity to convert from methane to hydrogen? and it is. Modelling showed that the majority of the network is appropriately sized for hydrogen. At the extremities, some reinforcement will be required in order to ensure that supply is maintained at peak demands. 
With demand and associated supply resolved and the network established as the right size, the biggest challenge is to create a conversion strategy for the city which has minimal impact on customers. In order to define a credible conversion strategy, the team was able to draw on the lessons from the relatively recent towns gas to natural gas conversion and adapt these to the gas grids of today. The gas for the first 150 years was called towns gas and it was called that because the gas was manufactured locally in, in every town. Following the discovery of the North Sea gas fields, the UK converted from Towns Gas, which contained 50% hydrogen, to natural gas in a major nationwide operation. Between 1966 and 1977, the UK undertook a Towns Gas to natural gas conversion, which was a conversion that happened over 10 years. Um, and at peak in 71-72, the UK were converting 2.3 million appliances per annum. We had an extensive look at how we did the original conversion and what you have to do is be able to compartmentalise the city into small enough chunks that you can convert in a way that's acceptable to the customers whilst maintaining methane supplies to the rest of the city. Converting a city the size of Leeds is expected to take three years and would only be undertaken during the summer months when demand for heating is low the city would be compartmentalised into distinct areas and each summer one third would be converted. This would ensure minimal disruption for customers and security of supply in winter. Leeds would be divided up into a number of geographical areas um, and those would be each converted over a matter of a few days and during that period gas plants would be changed over. We would need to develop a new range of hydrogen appliances and hydrogen burners so we could go into properties and we could upgrade the appliance. Using hydrogen to fuel appliances is not a technical challenge. There are already examples around the world like this hydrogen cooker. As far as the customer is concerned, it is probably the least disruptive um, change you would have to move to a clean carbon economy because you would be changing equipment within the house but you wouldn't be having to change the whole infrastructure within the house. So minimal disruption in the highways and in the homes as well. The final part of the project is to establish how much the conversion will cost. The total costs for the project have been estimated at just over £2 billion, split approximately 50-50 between appliance upgrades across the city and the building of hydrogen production, storage and pipeline infrastructure. Additionally, around £140 million in initial annual costs will be required for hydrogen production and carbon capture, reducing significantly over time with economies of scale as more cities convert. Funding the project through a regulatory business plan would allow costs to be socialised across the UK, as was done for the original Towns Gas to Natural Gas conversion. This would result in a minimal impact on UK customers' gas bills. The H21 Leeds CityGate project has established that converting a city like Leeds is both technically possible and financially viable. Before conversion can begin, a series of enabling projects must be undertaken to ensure every aspect of the process has been thoroughly tested and planned. In addition, key policy decisions will be required about whether to proceed with hydrogen conversion and with the associated carbon capture and storage programmes. Carbon capture and storage is pretty critical in my understanding to any decarbonisation pathway but certainly for the opportunity to decarbonise the gas grid, carbon capture and storage is essential. To demonstrate the potential impact of H21, the project team has also provided a vision of what a UK-wide incremental rollout of a hydrogen economy could look like. Because conversion is incremental, it can be fast or slow as required to meet UK carbon reduction targets. As well as heat, H21 can support decarbonisation of both transport and electricity generation with hydrogen refuelling stations and micro-combined heat and power appliances in the home. In terms of a nationwide rollout of hydrogen, we're well placed with the, the amount of natural gas we can bring into the country. Um, we're well placed with the experience we have with these kind of chemical processes. We have the sites around the country. The potential is huge. 
Ultimately, H21 could position the UK as a world-leading hydrogen economy and establish a global market similar to the liquid natural gas market of today, providing a long-lasting, sustainable solution to energy decarbonisation. There are jobs in this for people, that there's a big economic impact that could take place. Leeds could become the centre for a hydrogen-based economy and a zero-carbon-based economy in the world. I think this is about the best example of the Northern Powerhouse and what it could mean that I've seen, where the benefits will be for Leeds as the biggest city in the north, but also the, the link to places like Selby and Wakefield and Teesside. We can see growth in terms of the existing industrial activity here on the back of the H21 project, expansion of hydrogen production which will bring well-paid and well-rewarded jobs here. Clearly we've got the skills base here and fundamentally we also have a group of industrial companies interested in creating a, a low carbon network here and plugging that into the H21 network would support them in their ambitions and would support a low carbon future for domestic heat and the gas network here in the UK. So there's jobs in it not just in Leeds but in the north as a whole and the opportunity for the north to show the world how you move to a low carbon economy in a way that's successful economically. The H21 project has shown that converting a city to a hydrogen fuel for heat is possible. With the technology in the supply chain already technically proven, a decarbonised 100% hydrogen gas grid could become a reality. It's not a matter of can it happen, it will happen because there is a will for it to happen. Technically, it's not an issue. The SMRs, the transport, the storage, we know it works because we build it. We know we can physically meet the engineering challenge of decarbonising H21. We've done it before. Uh, we've moved from town gas to natural gas. We've got a network out there that's almost fit for the future for another hundred years. Why wouldn't we want to use that? It's not about one energy vector winning or losing. In my view, it's about the challenge of the Climate Change Act. And actually, having more options in play gives you more ability to meet that challenge. The way that hydrogen offers very high levels of decarbonisation at extremely modest costs using a proven supply chain, it just has a tremendous amount going for it. I've spent a long time in my career worrying about this sort of stuff and this represents to me the cheapest way of solving some intractable and difficult problems. This is a real opportunity to do something differently. And I think reusing our national gas grid, our national distribution system, is just a wonderful way of making use of what we've got and doing good for us and the planet.